Continuing on with our shotgun house example, I have made the trim around the doorway with some extra little boards at the top because I felt my door was way too tall, even for tall avatars. I'm going to make double doors for this because I really like double doors. They seem to be better for scale for me. There's no reason to have double doors, but it's a good example for me to show you a couple other things along the way, and so we will do that too. The main point of this tutorial is to show you how you can trick the uploader into thinking that your blender door is actually a prim cut in half so that you can use the old-fashioned scripts that are all over the grid. There are other ways to make your door open, including some very fancy scripting. So if you're a wonderful scripter, you can use that method. But most of us aren't all that good at scripting. And so this is a good way to do things with the free scripts that are out there and work just perfectly. Let's look at what I've done so far. We are in object mode and we are in materials view. Long ago, way back at the beginning, I told you I would explain to you why I have ambient occlusion on. And I'm going to do that right now. If we change to solid mode, our model is still very clear. We can see all the edges and the shadows really help you figure out where things are. If we turn the ambient occlusion off, everything becomes very flat. We can still tell where things are, but it's much more difficult. You can change the different parameters of ambient occlusion right here in this little window, but I think the defaults work just fine. I've made a cube that represents the size of our door. That will actually be the door eventually, and there's going to be another one side by side. So let's turn off the door molding. You can do that by clicking on this little eye over here and we will make the house disappear also. That leaves us with the door. Now let's see what we have here. This is our door. We want to make a copy of our door so that shift and D and we want to go on the X direction and make it match up just like that. Now, there's lots of different ways to accomplish this feat that we're going to do, but I thought of one that's probably easier than what I normally do. And so I'm going to show you that in hopes that it is truly easier for you. If this is our door, this is going to turn out to be a little triangle right up here that we're going to make invisible later. And that will make the actual size of the area this full size, even though the door isn't there. This will make a little more sense after I do it. So I'm going to go into edit mode and get rid of some faces. I'm going to switch to edge select, click on an edge, make a loop cut and then switch back to face mode and delete one more face. Now here's where it gets a tiny bit tricky. Let's zoom way in. Back in edge select, I'm going to click on this edge, do another loop cut, click. Then I'm going to switch to vertex select click on a vertex, delete that. Now it's a little hard to see, but there's a vertex right here and there's one right here. And if we click on each one of those, we can hit the F key and make an edge. And from there, we can go to edge select, click on that edge, click on this edge and make a face. And we've got part of a triangle. I'm gonna do the same thing with the other side. And there's our triangle. 
Now there's one more very important thing we have to do and that's to assign a different material to this little triangle, both pieces of this little triangle. So I'm going to select both faces there, go over here and make a new material and call it hinge and assign it. That way we'll be able to make that transparent when we get it into world. Now I'm going to join that hinge to my left door by holding down the shift key and clicking on the door while I already had the hinge selected and join them. Now I can go ahead and work on my door. I can put a window in it if I want to. I can add a doorknob, which probably would be handy. All pieces of your door, hinges, doorknob, windows, and our little triangle up here need to be part of the same mesh, one single mesh, in order to use the old-fashioned door scripts. This is my slightly steampunk door. I have mapped it and there are three materials assigned. You can see that over here. We have one for the metal, one for the wood, and one for our hinge that we made. Now, most of the time I would just very carefully bake this door so that the front of the door looked almost exactly like the back of the door so far as light and shadow goes. And that works very well sometimes, but I want to show you an optional method in case you want to mirror something because sometimes that's the only way that you can get what you're looking for. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to use something called the mirror modifier and it's a very simple thing to use, but there is a little caveat there and I'm going to show you why. Over here, this little wrench is the icon for the modifiers. I'm in object mode. I'm going to add mirror. And then I'm going to tell it what axis I want it to mirror and this is the axis. Now let's look and see what happened. It mirrored our little triangle. Actually there's two on top of each other. This is not good and I knew that was going to happen. So I'm going to show you how you fix that so you don't have any issues. We'll get rid of our modifier right now. So what we need to do is go into edit mode and this just simply drag our model away from this little dot which is our origin point. Then we can go back into object mode, add our modifier, mirror modifier and see how easy that worked. Then you just apply it and you have two. Right now both our left and right door are connected to each other and that's not going to work very well for doors that are opening. So we need to fix that. Going into wireframe mode, deselecting, holding down the B key I'm drawing a box around everything on the right hand side. Because it's in wireframe, it will get things on the other side of the door, not just what you would normally see as you're looking at it. Then we hit P on the keyboard and selection. Go back into material mode and we can see that one is separate from the other now. There we go. Happily, the mirror modifier uses the same texture for both doors automatically, so we don't have to remap that. Now, you might have not thought about this yet, but you would have figured it out when you tried to walk through your house and you couldn't. Because the door molding and entranceway is a separate piece from the house, it has to have its own physics model too. So you get to repeat the same steps that you did for the house with the door molding. Don't forget that. 